So I don't have time to do my hair or make things look pretty right now. I'm kind of in the process of packing. Um, if you follow my Twitter or you're following me on my blog, you know that I've recently received a job offer for my field, so I've been really busy. But today I wanted to talk about something that isn't HGAC related or art related because I couldn't really find a lot of people at my age talking about hysterectomies and I feel like someone needs to start the conversation or add to the conversation for, you know, the pieces that I didn't find. I'm 25 currently and a hysterectomy is a really big um, decision. Basically it means that they're taking out your uterus and um, without a uterus, a woman cannot have biological children. Um, for someone like me who's adopted, that's not a problem. Uh, I believe that adoption's awesome. You know, if I want kids in the future, um, yeah, I'll get my own <laughs> that way. But I feel that it is necessary to sort of explain myself and to maybe inspire someone else who maybe struggling with the same problems I had to figure out, you know, hey, maybe this would be a good option for you because nobody really talks about it. So I've done a variety of different things. Um, like most girls, I eventually tried birth control to help with menstrual cramps and um, just the sort of irregularity of my menstruation. Um, it sounds weird to use birth control for that while being completely celibate, you know, not having sex or anything. But to me, it seemed like a great idea to try to help me professionally prepare for um, the future. In the past, when I've had um, problems with cramping, I have had to leave work or I couldn't go into work. Um, it's just really caused a lot of problems, particularly back cramps. Mine are pretty bad for me and I don't like them. Birth control really messed with my body. Um, it made me kind of cranky, kind of crazy, and it wasn't a good idea. It just wasn't. I felt very suicidal on it, and I already take other medications to help with my anxiety and depression, so it was adding to it and making it worse, and I knew that wasn't right. So I decided to talk to um, an OBGYN, and they um, talked to me about something called the Morena. <laughs> there are many, many horror stories on the Morena. There are also many um, positive stories about the Morena. So, honestly, I think you have to listen to your body for it. I tried it in December of 2015. So basically it goes into the uterus. And when it goes in there, um, it holds itself in place and it dispenses medicine, like as if you were taking the pill. And if you have trouble remembering to take your pill or, you know, that sort of problem, it may be a great choice. It wasn't a good choice for me because I felt it inside of my body the whole time that I was using it. It was very painful to me. Um, I even have this lovely little uh, yellow paper to show just in case I have to show it to anyone else, like insurance, where I went in I, and basically I told them, hey, I think something's wrong with this. I don't feel good. I'm cramping. I don't, I'm just sick. This is terrible. And it, nothing else had changed except for the Morena. And when I did um, go, they basically told me, tough luck kid, no one's going to take it out. My doctor was even on call that day, and they were just like, it's pelvic pain, it's an uncertain cause sort of thing. I knew it was the Mirena, and um, that's something I always encourage other women. Um, if you know it's one thing and you know better, be persistent, ask for help, don't don't take no for an answer because you know your body better than any doctor does. So go by what you know. And I couldn't get the help and I was leaving school and 
I was really depressed and I was trying to stay together and I couldn't keep myself together in time to um, pack, get ready for graduation. Um, there was just so much going on. I remember just being exhausted and I did something mildly stupid, <laughs> and I say mildly because um, there are other people who will talk about they didn't have any problem with this. That's why I say it's mildly, because I, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone else. But, you know, I was desperate <laughs> to try to regain control over what I needed, um, gain control over me. So I actually... Um, had been told that he had cut the strings long, the OBGYN. And so I, he pretty much told me where he put them. And so I reached up and untangled them from where he'd put them and pulled the marina straight out. Now, I'm fortunate that it didn't cause any problems exiting or anything like that. Um, I'm told that there can be a lot of problems if you're not careful. I didn't have those problems. I'm really, really lucky <laughs> uh, in hindsight, but I was—I really was so emotionally <laughs> distraught. I didn't care, and I could not get an appointment with him for help. He would not help me. The doctor, yeah, it was bad. It was very bad, and so the Morena is basically out of the question. <laughs> so now that we've covered the two big bases that insurance and medical professionals will suggest, I then turned to my mom, who had been against the interutero um, device the entire time, and she didn't, sorry, I need to move the camera, she didn't really explain to me why at the time, and so I was just thinking, whatever, I know better, like many people my age do. We're so smart, not really. Um, <laughs> But when I went to her and told her about my problems, she went with me to a doctor's appointment here at home. And we talked to a lovely doctor who basically sat down with us and said, you know, this sounds like endometriosis because I have other issues besides trying to control cramps and um, irregular menstrual cycles. Um, I also have IBS. And he was like, you know, sometimes endometriosis can actually be causing um, IBS too. It can all be linked together. And I was like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, yeah, we need to talk about this. And as we talked, he pretty much said, you know, normally I wouldn't recommend a hysterectomy for someone your age because most people haven't thought it out well but you have, so we are, we can go forward with this and we need to talk to insurance. It helps that you've talked to multiple people within our, um, uh, by, uh, our group and said, you know, hey, I don't want to have kids. Um, and so they went and talked to my insurance first. And so tomorrow I get my hysterectomy, which is part of the reason I wanted to make this video. This, I know some people will tell me, is a terrible decision. <laughs> you know, be fruitful um, and replenish the earth is what a lot of people would say. But I also feel like with the medicines that I have tried, the hormonal issues that I've experienced with it, I feel like um, I would not be able to safely carry a child and emotionally be strong enough to then care for it. Um, so, obviously this is my decision, no one's making it for me, but this is where I stand on it currently. Um, I'll kind of do a bit of an update later, it may be several weeks later, I may record, uh, videos of my loopiness or whatever, um, and they warned me, they're like, the first couple days, first week or two, you're kind of not all there. <laughs> So we'll see how it goes, um, but I just wanted to share my process, my my problems, 
so that maybe someone else who's suffering with these problems can start that conversation. And even if it's not right for you, you can have the conversation with your doctor and maybe it, maybe it will help.